Good evening. Welcome to our third episode of KMSU's Inside Out. I'm your host, Tyler Lubin, and joined by always... Howard Wade here, ladies and gentlemen, and we do have a wonderful show on deck for today. Joining me will be Janie, student here at Minot State University in the Broadcasting Department, and Cole will also give our sports update. Uh, my interview today is the Assistant Director of Athletics for Revenue and Fan Development, Sal Rodriguez. Should be a good time. We'll hear more from the weather. Yep. And a really exciting week, homecoming week, Howard. Uh, kind of any plans for the weekend? I got some plans, uh, mainly on Saturday, tailgating before that football game, you know, and probably go out with the friends and see what's happening after the game. Hopefully we can get the win. It'll be even more exciting if we do. So yeah. Definitely, for sure, homecoming is this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, a lot going on around the campus news-wise. Emily, uh, anything going to catch your attention? I did hear that Josh Jumel is here today. Wow. I, I, I heard Howard saw, a friend yeah. saw him. Yeah, I saw him. Friends took pictures with him. There have been a lot of selfies taken. And for those that don't know, Josh Dumel was a former student here at Minot State University, played football here. And he's probably most notably mentioned for the Transformers acting role that he did back in 2007. So, yeah, great guy. If you see him around campus, say hello. He's a very wonderful Take guy. Take a picture. Yeah. So. yeah. So the Golden Awards Dinner is tonight from 6 to 9 in the Student Conference Center. This award is the highest honor presented by the MSU Alumni Association. The selection process is based off of outstanding service and or leadership in career or the MSU community. This award is for alum under the age of 40 and all recipients are based off of the same criteria. And like we said, some of our honorees are from the past include Chuck Barney and Josh Jumel. And this event is open to the public. Tickets are $30. For any questions or to purchase tickets, contact the alumni office at 701-858-3373. Like we were saying before, homecoming week is in full effect with lots of activities for students in the community. MSU Life will be hosting Beep Bingo in the Upper Dome parking lot from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight. The event is free when you provide a current MSU student ID. And for any reminders and to stay up to date, visit MSU Life on Instagram and Facebook. KMSU is also going to be involved in that, so you'll see some familiar faces handing out prizes, I heard. Um, and I don't know about you, but I like socializing with my friends. And there is a homecoming social for MSU alumni and friends at the original bar and nightclub from 7 to 11 tomorrow night. There will be appetizers and a cash bar, all while gathering, all while, all while gathering with classmates. Um, some of the featured groups this year include the football team from the 1970s and some of our fraternities that we've had. So some pretty cool opportunities to meet with other people that have been here in the past. And temperatures are dropping and the flu season is quickly approaching. There's a pop-up flu vaccination clinic on Thursday the 14th and Wednesday the 27th in the Student Center Atrium from 11 to 2. Students will need to fill out a consent form and they will be billed $25 to their student account. For more information or any questions, contact Deborah Hammond, the Student Center Health Counseling Services Director. Howard, are you going to beat Bingo tonight? I do plan on heading over to beat Bingo right after we're done here live. Yep. Uh, we will speak more about that. Thank you, Emily, for that news update. <laughs> so she is a basketball player here at Minot State, also in the broadcasting department, and does so much around here on campus. Ladies and gentlemen, I am speaking of Janie. Janie, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, happy to be here. Perfect. Now, before we get into Beep Bingo and all these exciting events that are happening this week, let's, let's find out about Janie. What is it that you do around here on campus, whether in the ID office that I sometimes see you or in this Hartnett Hall? Yeah, so I'm a professional communications major, and so this is my second year here at Minot State. Um, I'm also the pro, or public relations manager for KMSU, as well as the red and green social media director, and then I also have a job over in the student ID office with um, Leon Przinsky and Aaron Hughes. Perfect. So with homecoming this week, can you tell us what all goes into organizing an event? Oh my goodness, lots of things. Um, so Aaron Hughes does a phenomenal job of planning like all the different events throughout the week and they have a huge team too called um, MSU Life and they're the ones who put all the details and planning into all the events and so um, it just starts with an idea and then there's like traditions you know that happen yeah. throughout the year too that um, have happened in years to pass like the homecoming parade is on Saturday beat bingo is relatively new last year was their first year of doing that there's also um, lots of other things too like 500 ways to win that's something that's happened in the past too um, we'll probably have a theme for the football game which is just kind of like a student ran thing that we just decided to do yeah. but yeah tons of different activities that go on throughout the week okay now bingo that's a term that around this campus gets everyone excited but when you add beep bingo what, what is that what does all that mean like what is beep bingo 
Yeah, so from what I've heard, Beat Bingo started last year because of COVID. Uh, we wanted to keep students separated and um, in a safe environment so they weren't in contact with other people. So Beat Bingo is you basically, you drive your car up to the third floor of the dome and you yeah. stay in your car the whole time. And so oh. you have your bingo card on your phone and then um, MSU life directors are calling numbers and different things throughout that. And you just play bingo on your phone, and when you get a bingo, you honk your horn, and then the prize is brought to you. So you don't have to get out of your vehicle, you don't have to come into contact with other people, um, and that's beat bingo. However, this year, they are doing a little bit different since COVID is something that um, we've been lucky enough to not have uh, severe cases here yeah. at Minot yet this year. And um, so people are welcome to bring lawn chairs or just hang out up at the front. And they're actually handing out bingo cards again this year. So it's not just on your phone. You're gonna have the physical bingo card and um, the directors are just gonna call numbers and whatnot from the front. And you get to go up and get your prize rather than the prize being brought to you. That sounds pretty exciting. From all of that, I understand that prizes will be given out. That's yes. very important here Lots at Minot of State. <laughs> Lots of prizes. Always great prizes here at Minot State with the MSU Life Committee. And we appreciate that. So that's tonight, tomorrow night and Saturday. What's on deck? What can they expect um, tonight? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think there's anything going on tomorrow night specifically. I do, if there is, I'm just not aware of it. But Saturday morning is the homecoming parade at 11. And so that's, I guess, I haven't been a part of that because last year there was COVID. But um, apparently they block off all of Broadway and yeah. there's like all different floats and stuff mm -hmm. and they do it all the way up to MSU. And then the football game is to follow that. So. Okay. And I want to I want to say that you can expect to meet the homecoming king and queen that was just yes. elected. Yes. Yep. So that's something that's great. Uh, Peyton Bland and Carson was as our new king and queen, if I'm I correct. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And congratulations to them. And Saturday's football game. Is there anything that like sometimes there's whiteout? Sometimes there's like. All yeah. Right. Is there anything like that that so, you should expect? Yeah. So from high school, I mean, a lot of people just do campus pride or like their school pride day, and so. We're hoping people just, Ivan, um, I'm the one who usually initiates like the whiteout and like different things, but I think this uh, Saturday for homecoming, we're just going to do Beaver Pride. So MSU Pride, red, green, black, whatever you want to wear that um, matches MSU. Okay. Thank you, Janie, for that MSU Life and homecoming events update. Now, I mentioned earlier that you're on the basketball team. We're less than about three, four weeks away from basketball getting underway. Last year with COVID, basketball was not the same. Home games were a bit awkward with COVID regulations and all that. Janie, what can you tell us for women's basketball heading into this new year, new coach? What's, what's to be expected for game one? Yes, so we have a full schedule this year. We are traveling just like we normally would have two yeah. years ago. I haven't experienced a regular season here at MSU yet because of COVID, of course. Um, we do have our first exhibition game on October 23rd down at Dickinson State. Um, practices, two hour practices start next Friday. So that's October 15th and that's when practices really start kicking off. And then November 4th, 5th and 6th, we're involved in a tournament over in Billings, Montana as well. Nice. So those are our first handful of games and um, things are looking pretty normal. Like we're hoping they stay that way. We play a lot of Minnesota schools and the Minnesota restrictions are a lot different than the North Dakota restrictions right now. Yeah. So we're not sure how we're going to navigate that quite yet. We haven't been um, given any information on competition for those sorts of things. However, everything up in Minot in North Dakota is looking pretty normal right now. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best with all that you do in the red and green, all that you do with MSU Life and basketball and everything else, Janie. Ladies and gentlemen, be on the lookout for Beep Bingo. And what time does Beep Bingo begin? 6.45. 6.45. You could head down at the Dome parking lot, play some Beep Bingo, win some prizes, and be sure to also attend this Saturday's football game as our team will look to get the dub against Minnesota State Moorhead. And we also appreciate Janie joining me today. Up next, after our underwriters, we will have Cole coming with our sports update and Roxanne with our weather. Stay tuned. Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 9:10 a.m., Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM, Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's music mix. 
SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's rock station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey, online info at msubeavers.com. Forward Communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. My Not Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bear's Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As promised, Roxanne is on deck with our weather update. Roxanne, it is still pretty warm here in Minot. What is, what is happening? Yeah, it's been a really good week so far, and even the past weeks have been super hot. But now we're going to look forward to the next week, and I promise it's going to change. So now we're going to go on to our what's happening in Minot right now. Currently in Minot, it is 77 degrees. All right, we're gonna go back. Sorry about that, guys. So, currently in Minot, it is 77 degrees with sunny skies. The high today is gonna be 77, so it's as hot as it's gonna get today, while the low is sitting at 54. We're gonna go on to our statewide temperatures today. Currently in Wilson, it is 72 degrees, while Dickinson is one degree higher at 73. Bismarck is at 73 degrees as well, and Minot, as I said, is at 75. Going on to the eastern side of the board, Grand Forks is the hottest today at 77. We're going to go on to our seven-day forecast. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all looking pretty cloudy throughout the board. Make sure you look at Saturday and sun Sunday. See how it is rainy. Our uh, lowest temperature on the weekend is going to be 55, although the low is sitting at 48. While we go on to next week, Monday is going to be the only sunny sky for the day, sitting at 64 and 43. While the rest of the week is going to be cloudy again, without Wednesday and Thursday expecting for. So make sure you guys bring a coat. We're going to see what the Beavers are going to be traveling this weekend. So um, Minot State Women's Volleyball is going to Sioux Falls. They're going to play on Friday. And it's going to be 82 degrees and sunny on that day while they go to Sioux Falls, while the low is sitting at 57. While they travel back to MSU, they're going to be 79 degrees while the low is at 61. And Sunday in Sioux Falls is going to sit at 68 degrees right there. We're going to do our hometown weather spotlight for our graphics girl, Josephine. She is from Oslo, Norway. So currently in Oslo, it is 54 degrees with partly sunny skies throughout the area. While in Oslo, it is 57 as the high with 46 as the low. So Minot right now is currently hotter than Norway, so I guess that's a win. That's all I have for you guys for the weather. We're going to go back to Tyler with a special guest. Thank you, Roxanne. Homecoming Week is here, and there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make these events happen. Joining me today is Assistant of Director of Athletics for Revenue and Development, Sal Rodriguez. Sal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, what do you look forward to the most during Homecoming Week? I think one of the most special things of Homecoming Week is when you have all the alum that come back, and whether that be um, maybe parents to current student-athletes, maybe alum that haven't been back for years, whatever, just the environment of having these individuals back um, and the passion they bring to Minot State is something that's really exciting. And it's not necessarily even something that's specifically driven by sports, but more just a passion to be a Minot State University Beaver. 
Uh, passion's always important. Uh, what kind of planning goes into events like this from the athletic standpoint? From the athletic standpoint, the biggest thing that we think about, obviously, is the time that everyone's going to have at the games. Now, believe it or not, I think homecoming is an easier one for us um, just because everyone wants to help out in any way possible. So there's a lot of activities that outside companies and sponsors want to assist us with, uh, which kind of takes some things off of my plate. It's more coordinating um, when and where people will be as opposed to making sure that there's activities there for people. So um, like I said, believe it or not, it makes things a little bit easier for me. A lot of alumni are coming to town. Mm -hmm. Do you expect a different type of fan environment and kind of like engagement kind of level? Yeah, I think the environment's going to be just a little bit different. Obviously, the students, I think, are going to show up and be rowdy as they always are. Um, homecoming weekend is definitely no exception to that. But I do think we'll see some of those older alum, too, that are, are there showing their pride. And they'll probably be there the whole game and, and be really invested in the success of the teams. Now, with alumni coming in, does that make you have any more type of different strategies or kind of a different approach to, like, getting more fans in the seats, or is it still the same? No, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's really just making sure they have a great time at the tailgate, and then when they're there at the game, they can engage with groups like our cheerleaders, our band, our athletes, and, and make sure that they really do have an enjoyable experience. Um, so what does a homecoming week look for you from a standpoint of, like, responsibilities yeah. and stuff? So, for, for me, it's really just making sure that we're fine-tuning and making sure everybody's at the right place at the right time. Um, a lot of running around and doing interviews and things like this uh, to help promote. Uh, and then making sure that, that our team is ready to go come game day. And now um, that might be all the different things that we have going on, tailgating, soccer, football, but uh, just making sure those things are ready to go. Now, being an alumni yourself, you know, kind of from an outside, you were a student for these homecomings in the past. You now are kind of oversee a lot of different objects during homecoming. Does that kind of put it into perspective for you, kind of like how special it is? Yeah. Uh, I definitely have a lot of passion when it comes to Minot State University, and so um, I might get a little picky about the way I want to see things just from an alum perspective, but um, I definitely enjoy it uh, thoroughly, and so it helps me, gives me the student perspective as well as the, the admin side of things. Uh, what kind of athletic events do you are, are on campus this weekend, for those who don't know? Yeah, this weekend our soccer team will kick things off 7.30 Friday night against Northern State University. Football will take the field at 2 p.m. against Moorhead, and then soccer will finish off the homecoming weekend noon against Moorhead as well on Sunday. Now, um, homecoming, the game is obviously is important. So do you have anything to do with like the parade? And is that kind of like your thought process for us, how you can organize things? Yeah, so making sure groups such as like our cheerleaders and, and buckshot can be at those events, that makes things uh, a little tricky. But um, this year, like I said, it's pretty easy. Hopefully the rain stays away um, and we can have ourselves a great time. Any messages for the fans out there looking to come? Make sure that you show up, have a great time. We're excited to have y'all. Um, and then go Beavers as always. The football game kicks off this weekend at 2 p.m. Saturday. Uh, we'll be right back after we're from our underwriters.
Welcome back. A lot going on in the sports world, from football to women's soccer. A lot is going on. We're here from our own Cole Clementich has more. Yes, thank you, Tyler. And a lot of events happening this homecoming weekend. Also, like you mentioned last, or like you had uh, Cody Campbell, the Minotaurs head coach, on last week. So hockey season is back. And hello, Beaver fans, and happy homecoming week. I am Cole Clementich back again this week with your Inside Out Sports. Your Beavers remain red hot. The Minot State soccer team continues to win on the pitch. They have themselves another weekend sweep inside conference play. A big win to get things started on Friday. A 1-0 score against Winona State and another shutout 3-0 over Upper Iowa on Sunday. The combined efforts of Sophia Lewis and Maddie Kindred earned them NSIC Offensive Player and Goalkeeper of the Week. Like I said, hockey season is officially underway in the Magic City. Your Lady Beavers dropped the puck versus Midland University. At the Mesa Arena, Minot State brought out the brooms to sweep the Warriors. Midland hung in there, but the Beavers roll out with a 2-1 win on Friday, and then Bismarck natives Riley Ball and Anna German led the way to give the Beavers a 3-2 win on Saturday. The team will travel to Colorado to take on the CU Buffs and the CU Rams, or CSU Rams. Excuse me. The men's hockey team also returned to action this past weekend, being led by new head coach Wyatt Waslinchuk. The Beavers roll out a dominant 4-0 victory over the in-state rival Jamestown Jimmies. The top line with Drew Carter, Carter Barley, Connor Navrat, and offensive defenseman Nick Doyle lead the way in scoring for the Beavers. Goaltender Riley Wallace pitches a 17-save shutout. In the NAHL, after splitting with the Austin Bruins on the road and a 7-3 loss in Bismarck, the Minot Minotauros are back to start a new season. The Toros under direction of new head coach Cody Campbell with an impressive 5-2 victory over the rival Bismarck Bobcats. The second line featuring Houston Cartman, David Nesberg, and North Dakota commit Jackson Panzer combined for six points on the night. Cartman was also rewarded with the Central Division Star of the Week. It's time for the weekend preview. Hopefully your homecoming week will consist of Beaver football as they will kick off with MSU Moorhead at 2 p.m. on Saturday. NSIC Soccer will feature the Red Hot Beavers hosting Northern State. Both games will take place at Herb Parker Stadium with the soccer kickoff moved back to 7.30. And then they return to the Herb for a Sunday matinee against the Moorhead Dragons. 12 o'clock to get your Sunday afternoon going. We have a high school football doubleheader in the Magic City. The Bishop Bryan Lions are in a huge rivalry matchup with the Velva Aggies. An early start at 3 p.m. and then following them will be the Minot High Magicians in a must-win game to stay in contention taking on the Bismarck Legacy Sabres. 7 p.m. at the Dwayne Carlson Stadium. Mesa Arena will stay busy as the Minot Minotauros are back on home ice to take on, for the first time, new in the division, the North Iowa Bulls. 7.35 puck drop for both Friday and Saturday. And a good luck to all Minot sports teams competing on the road. That's all we have for this week on KMSU Sports. I'm Cole Clementich signing off. Happy homecoming, and as always, roll beeves. Tyler Howard, a big walk-off victory for the Dodgers yesterday, and Red Sox getting a 6-2 win in the Wild Card Series in the American League. Uh, pretty big baseball games going on as the postseason is getting underway. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, definitely for sure. Um, watching that game yesterday kind of was really tight back and forth, and you know to see a guy like Chris Taylor hit a walk-off home run like that, I think a lot of America was rooting for the Cardinals, but you know, the Dodgers did win 106 games in the regular season. So yeah, and yeah. Kudos to the Cardinals for still making a great effort, keeping it tied at one. And now we have the Dodgers going up against the Giants. So yep. that's, I'm, the Astros should have played today. So They're playing right now. Right, right now, right. yeah. So I do see the Dodgers defending their title. I can say mm -hmm. that. Thank you, Cole, for our sports update. At this time, we will take a final break for some promo videos. And we'll be right back. I've been cheering since I was a freshman in high school. I coached for about two years. I was a head coach there. It's always been my life. I really love how involved all my teachers are and they really care. I get a lot of real world experience here. Public relations to me is all about helping an organization, a business, an individual be shed in a positive light. That's what it's all about. For the KMSU auction, we go around to businesses and we get donations. I got to auction off the packages on live TV. I loved everything about it. I can't tell you how much fun I had. I never knew what I was going to do 
and I never had any passions. I have a broadcasting degree. I felt I was at home at school and I finally felt I was on the right path and I was actually going to like what I'm doing and be good at it. Minot State's small enough that you get to experience a lot of good things. To get into radio right away, TV right away, work as a director or a producer or a talent on the show, it's really fun to be involved doing all those things. We've got the new technical equipment. Everything you work with here, for the most part, is going to be out there in the real world. Neil Roberts is a great mentor. He has been seasoned in TV and radio and able to bring that experience to the classroom. And he's personable. He has a passion for it, and he wants everyone else to share that passion as well. I'm the director and producer of Inside Out. I work with a lot of different people and make sure that everyone's satisfied and, and everybody's working together to make communication what it is. Over this semester, everybody's worked together and found this rhythm with each other, and it all just comes together and makes a really nice finished product. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for sticking with us through this entire segment. Show number three here. We had a wonderful show. Janie, our first guest, we appreciate her coming on and letting us know all about the MSU Life events that are happening this week. Today, Beat Bingo, don't forget, 645. Tomorrow, we will have Build a Beaver from 11 to 1. Now, this is a replica of a beaver. This is a tiny one. There are a lot bigger ones. I have one at home. That's not real? No. Oh, it's not real. Wow. No. Not real. But... Uh, I don't know, where would you go for a real beaver around here? You know, that's actually a question I pondered myself. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe like a river of some sort, because yeah. they, do like, they don't like running water. So, yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not really too sure where you go for one of those, but I do know you can build your own stuff right. on the mall, like you were talking about. You can about. build one, and it'll look pretty good and look pretty cute. You can put it in your bed. Uh, also happening from the show today, we appreciate Cole with his sports update, Roxanne with weather, appreciate Emily with news, and looking forward to this weekend, we will have on Saturday before the football game, our Saturday showdown will be produced here live at, what time is the Saturday showdown again? Uh, the Saturday showdown is before kickoff, before so kickoff. it's like a pregame show, kind so, of yeah. what they do, so like they, they go show. into details about the interview with the coaching staff and stuff like that. 11.30 is what I, is the time they go on air. Okay. There's also a Monday show kind of to recap sports and give you an in-depth look called Inside the Dam. Yeah. That is Mondays from 2.30 to 3, I, I wanna, believe. I want to say so. Yeah. And that is all brought to you right here. So be sure to catch for all your Beaver sports needs. We got you covered. Yes. And homecoming game against Moorhead this Saturday. We will have a lot of special guests. Also tonight, if you're interested in meeting the Josh DML, 6.30, you can call a certain number that Emily gave in her news update. And looking forward to next week, we probably will have look to have the king and queen on, hopefully. Hopefully we'll that's the that goal. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, always kind of an impor important week after homecoming, kind of to recap what's going on. We yeah. should have a lot of exciting shows going on, a lot of news, a lot of sports like we always have. And I'm very, very excited for next week's show. Yes. And to our entire team here in the broadcasting department, we thank you. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us today. Roll Beast.